What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, I'm a staff software engineer, and I was able to make six figures per year by the time I turned 26. I didn't get there from buying real estate. I don't have any courses to sell to you telling you how to make six figures per year just like me. I was able to make six figures per year from working a regular nine to five job. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to make six figures per year by the time you turn 30 doing the same things that I did. If you are already 30 years old, don't worry, this video can still apply to you instead of being able to make six figures per year by the time you turn 30. Let's bump it up a decade and say you'll be making six figures by the time you turn 40. Quite honestly, you'll probably be able to make six figures per year by the time you turn 32, if you're 30 today. So stick around until the end of this video because this may very well change your life. By far the easiest and most consistent way to make six figures per year in your 20s is to get a job at a tech company. If you are just starting out in tech, you can earn over $100,000 per year as an entry-level software engineer with no years of experience. Twitter pays their software engineers with zero to two years of experience, $195,000 per year on average. Robinhood, which is based out of Menlo Park, California, they pay their entry-level software engineers $197,000 per year. DoorDash has an average starting salary of $100,000 $99,000 per year for their software engineers. Then you have LinkedIn, which pays their entry-level software engineers $200,000 per year. And if you stick around and get promoted, you can make way more than that. Airbnb and Stripe pay their entry-level software engineers $213,000 per year. If you're into video games, Roblox will pay you $222,000 per year as a entry-level software engineer based out of San Mateo, California. And if those entry-level software engineer salaries were not enough for you, you can go get a job at Lyft, which will pay you $230,000 per year just starting out. Now keep in mind, those are just the starting salaries for entry-level software engineers. I have an entire playlist that is dedicated to talking about software salaries. And so if you wanna learn more about how much you can make as a software engineer, spoiler alert, some of them can earn as much as $3 million per year. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description below. It's also worth noting that those companies I listed off are all based out of California. And while that is the best place to work if you wanna make the most money as a software engineer, that's not the only place that you can work if you wanna make six figures per year as a software engineer. A little later in this video, I will tell you how you can make six figures per year as a software engineer living in a low cost of living area. In order to land a job at a tech company, you will have to learn how to code. The good news for you is I'm stupid and I suck at math. And so if I can become a software engineer earning six figures per year, you can as well. There are a variety of resources out there for learning to code that are completely free. I have a free course aptly named Kotlin Tutorial for Beginners. I will leave a link to that in the description below if you wanna check it out after this video. If Kotlin isn't your thing, you can still learn to code completely for free. There's a website out there called Free Code Camp, and that website has helped over 40,000 graduates get jobs at top tech companies. The website also offers a variety of free certifications that you can get, which include responsive web design, JavaScript algorithms, and data structures, APIs and microservices, machine learning with Python, and many more. Really, you can learn just about anything for free on that website, and so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If you can't find exactly what you're looking for on Free Code Camp's website, they also have a YouTube channel, which has a variety of free tutorials where you can learn just about anything. If you're looking for some more free resources for learning how to code, I recommend checking out the following YouTube channels. Web Dev Simplified, Kenny Gunderman, Web Dev Junkie, Code Stacker, The New Boston, Caleb Curry, Kevin Powell, and really the list could go on and on. So I'll leave a link to all of their channels in the description down below. So be sure, check them out, subscribe if you enjoy their channels. And one of the smallest things that you can do to help support those channels is to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If self-guided learning isn't for you, then I would recommend checking out a coding bootcamp. The average coding bootcamp takes 16 weeks to complete, although there are some other ones out there that can take as much as six months. There are a wide variety of coding bootcamps out there and they will vary based on where you are located. And so instead of giving you specific recommendations on where to look, I will just tell you what to look out for when you are looking for the coding bootcamp that is right for you. For starters, the whole point of going to a coding bootcamp is to get a job as a software engineer. When looking at coding bootcamps, you should always ask what percentage of graduates were able to get a job as a software engineer after graduating. You should also find out if that coding bootcamp has a career services department, and if they do, find out which companies they partner with. Another thing I recommend doing is asking if they can connect you with the recent graduates. That way you can talk with them and ask about their experience with that bootcamp. You should also look at their reputation online, and what I recommend doing is searching for that coding bootcamp's name, and then add Better Business Bureau to the end, or a ripoff report to the end. That'll take you to pages where you can see what their score is on the Better Business Bureau, 
And if they have any pages on Ripoff Report, it'll show you all of those comments and you can figure out, is this a good school or is this a place where you might get scammed? If all of that sounds too scary or you wanna spend more time learning about software engineering, what I recommend doing is going to a four-year university and getting a bachelor's degree in computer science. Getting a bachelor's degree in computer science is the route that I took myself, and I think it worked out really well. From my experience, any regionally accredited university is perfectly fine to go with so long as they have a computer science degree. Really, the main difference that you'll get from going to, say, a affordable state college and a Ivy League school is the Ivy League school will have more companies that are coming to them to recruit, whereas the state school may not have quite as many companies recruiting from them right out of college. For myself, I graduated from Northern Illinois University, and unfortunately, Google and Facebook did not recruit from that college, but there are still plenty of companies that did recruit from there, and that was actually how I got my first job right out of college. On the flip side, had I went to an Ivy League college and spent way more money, there is a much better chance that Google and Facebook and all of the major tech companies would have been recruiting from that school. So really, you have to weigh the pros and cons. You have to figure out, is it actually worth spending more money for those connections? For some people it will, for others it won't be. And right now, if you aren't sure which path to take, I would recommend starting off with the self-guided route that's completely free. If you do find out that self-guided isn't for you, you can always step it up and go to either a boot camp or a university and spend some money there. If you're living in a lower cost of living area, then there are still paths for you to make six figures per year by the time you turn 30. The quickest option would be to move to an area that has a slightly higher cost of living, but also pays significantly higher salaries. San Francisco is fairly expensive, although their real estate prices have been dropping now that more and more people are getting remote opportunities and leaving the city. The median pay in SF is $232,000. In Seattle, you can expect a median salary of $197,000 $197,000 per year. Then New York is a little less at $182,000. Software engineers in LA can expect a median salary of $175,000 per year. In San Diego, you can expect $160,000. Boston and Baltimore are slightly less at $155,000 per year. Then if Texas is more your speed, you can get a job in Austin where they pay software engineers $148,000 per year on average. Chicago has a median salary of $144,000 per year. I have been living in Chicago since 2016 and I can tell you, you can live fairly comfortable in the city making just $100,000 per year living on your own. Portland and Denver round out this list where you can make a median salary of $142,000 and $140,000 per year respectively. If relocation isn't something that you're interested in and you still wanna make six figures per year living in a low cost of living area such as Kansas City, Missouri, where where the median salary for software engineers is just $78,000 per year. Don't worry, I got you. You can still make six figures per year, no problem. So the median is the halfway point for salary distributions. That means 50% of people make less than that and 50% of people make more than that. So your starting salary in a low cost of living area most likely will not start out at six figures per year. And truthfully, that's perfectly fine. This morning, I found a three bedroom townhouse with a garage in Kansas City, Missouri that was renting for $1,600 per month. For reference, I would pay upwards of $5,000 per month in Chicago for that exact same apartment and I would have to pay $250 per month just to park a vehicle. So let's assume you start out making $78,000 per year in Kansas City, Missouri. You might make a little bit more, you might make a little bit less. You'll want to fast track your path to being promoted to a senior software engineer. The reason being is that most senior software engineers in that area make at least $100,000 per year some that are working at companies like Amazon are making $200,000 per year. Now, let's say that you are 22 years old because that is roughly the average age of a entry-level software engineer. I'm just pulling that number out of pretty much thin air. I'm basing that off of the average university graduate would be 22 years old. And so the average university graduate that is getting an entry-level job as a software engineer would be 22 years old. That gives you eight years to be promoted to a senior software engineer and quite honestly, you can do the bare minimum and in eight years, just working 40 hours a week, you'll have no problem being promoted to a senior software engineer. 
so I wouldn't worry about it if you're getting an early start. Now, maybe you're like me and you're going to start your career at 24 or 25 years old and you're feeling a bit of a time crunch to get to that six figure a year income. For myself, my first job out of college, I was working in the Chicago suburbs and I was making $60,000 per year. This was back in 2014. After around one year in the industry, I was making $78,000 per year and I was also promoted to a senior software engineer. 10 months after that, I was able to get another promotion where I was making $87,000 per year. Several months later, I went to a new company that was based out of Chicago and I saw my salary increase considerably. I went from making that $87,000 per year, now I was making $105,000 per year with a bonus target of $10,500. Then around two years later, I joined another tech company with a starting salary of $125,000 per year and I had a bonus target of $12,500. While I was at that company, I was promoted to staff software engineer where my salary then increased to $143,000 per year with a bonus target of $14,300 per year. This was just five years after I graduated from college, so at this point in time, I was 29 years old. After that, I went to work for another tech company in the city. I had a starting salary of $155,000 per year with a bonus target of $46,500. And I have since moved on to another company and I'm not too sure what their feelings are about talking about my current salary. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now. All right, so how did I do that and how can you do that as well? For starters, I was always working on a side project outside of work. One project I worked on would scrape Amazon store listings and it would notify you when the price dropped below a certain price. I also kept my options open. So this meant whenever a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn, I would almost always respond and we would grab coffee and we would talk about that new opportunity. If I was able to find a company that was willing to pay around 20% more than my current salary, most of the time I was happy to go to that new company. Now, some folks will say that job hopping is a bad thing. And yes, if you do it too frequently, you will have a uh, fun time explaining to recruiters what the heck happened. At the same time though, if the recruiter is reaching out to you, they've already looked at your job history and so they already know where you have been. And so normally it's really not that big of an issue to explain why you're looking for a new opportunity. Also, every company that I ended up leaving most likely would be more than happy to have me back. Now, why would I say this? Well, every time I started at a new company, I would hit the ground running and I would get as much work done as quickly as possible just to prove my value. One of my shorter tenures at a company was just eight months, but in that time, I completed seven different projects for four different clients. And then even my last job, where I only stayed for a couple of months before I realized this company wasn't the right fit for me, I was still able to modernize their CI and CD pipeline. And I was also able to ensure that we could deliver on a major UI redesign. And for what it's worth, that happened between February of 2020 and June of 2020. So it was kind of hectic. People were getting furloughed and it was just, it was rough to try and get any amount of work done. The benefit of working at so many companies so early on in my career is I was able to see all of the different business processes that these companies have laid out and all of the different ways that companies can ship software. In my opinion, it is far more valuable to have one year of experience 10 times than to have 10 years of experience one time, mainly because company processes tend to stay the same. And so if you've only worked at one company for 10 years, you're not going to be able to see how many different ways you can really deliver software. Every company that I have joined, I have been able to bring a wealth of knowledge just from being able to observe on all of the other companies and how their processes work. I've been able to help modernize processes at other companies that I have joined. Now, at this point in my career, I'm really not looking to change jobs as often as I did earlier on in my career. Interviewing is exhausting and quite honestly, I'm really comfortable with where I'm at today. If you are just starting out though, you should make like a sponge and absorb all the knowledge that you possibly can as quickly as you can. Really, don't be afraid to move on to another company if they're offering you at least 20% more in salary or if they're offering to promote you because both of those things are really huge and will really help you further along in your career. If you want to make six figures per year in your 20s, then becoming a software engineer is a fantastic option. If you are excited about becoming a software engineer, then be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell. 
I upload videos on software engineering on a weekly basis. Also, if you have a friend that might be inspired by this video, feel free to share it with them as well. I also have a growing Discord community that is completely free to join. We talk about software engineering and other stuff, so I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description down below. That's it, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.